U.S. Open continuing here at the par 4 7th at Oakmont. It's 434 yards. Frank, did you hear the sound of that coming off the club face? It was like a cannon. I've seen some long tee shots, but it's the advantage to tee that ball up. Get it up there quickly, get the wind behind you. It's amazing how far you can hit it. Frank, what does this second shot look like at the par 4 7th? Well, normally on any other golf course, you'd say you've got enough green there to work with. But remember, in a U.S. Open, with the firmness and the speed of these greens, if this ball is slightly offline, it's just going to funnel into one of those two bunkers on the right or that one in the back right. This is why you have to respect the middle of this green. Those greens about as fast as that Pennsylvania turnpike to the right of the seventh here. Trying to generate some momentum here at the seventh hole it is for birdie. Been pretty good all day from this distance, just trying to take care of business. Very well done, almost made it. Yeah, there'll be no stress for the next one. Trying to stay steady, make a par. Nothing wrong with that par putt. U.S. Opens, Frank, as you well know, you've played in so many of them, are supposed to be demanding and tough. This is what a U.S. Open's all about, a par three at nearly 300 yards. That's the eighth at Oakmont. It's not just the length, too, but this is a, a typical Oakmont green, which means it's not easy. There is an option, though, if you can't reach this green, or at least fly it on, you might get a lucky bounce to kick forward. Um, you'll see a lot of people chipping from around the front edge of this green, and there's no shame in that. to be a smart shot, Frank. Yeah, no problem here. That's going to fly all the way. Certainly had enough power, just didn't have any touch. Not in the fairway, but not too bad. Just in that first cut. the cup. What a shot. Can't get much better than that. And now to the ninth, and in case a player has forgotten somehow that he's at a U.S. Open, the ninth will remind him very quickly that uh, this is the national championship. This is demanding. Out of here. She is rolling up for the big one. Wow, I mean, she absolutely annihilated that T ball. Oh, huge. Ooh. Huge with a capital F. Busted that. Good strike, good lie, good chance to attack the pin. This one will play a little bit longer. It's up the hill to that green. This looks like it's going to find the target. Oh, what an eagle. That one's going to be wild out there. This place is absolutely buzzing right now. Action continuing here. We've just made the turn. Let's go out to number 10, see what's happening. Frank, as we come up on the middle portion of this third round, it's been a good performance so far. It has, taking uh, all the opportunities uh, that have been presented. 
And there's plenty of them out on this golf course too. Once again, pick away the easy holes. That's the key to this round of golf. The par fives, the reachable ones, the short par fours where you get wedges in your hand. That's the key. Try to bury every cut 10 feet in. You've really got to focus on the small thing. Right where they were aiming, in the fairway. Frank, it looks simple enough, this approach shot to the 10th hole, but it can be tricky. Why? Just the, the, the general terrain or slope of this green. Everything slopes from uh, the front right of this green to the back left. So not only do you get huge breaking putts here, but it's so difficult with a long club to keep that second shot on the green. Playing this par four, still not on the green after that second shot. But still not done. Um, a good third shot, maybe get away here with par. Just trying to make clean contact from the rough. out of the rough and right up next to the hole. Getting set now over the putt. Well, that's a bit disappointing. I guarantee you though, she thought she had that one. <laughs> 